Welcome to the channel. Today we are continuing in our journey through the Metroid Dread soundtrack. If you're new to this series, the essential idea is to recreate the soundtrack for this game, track by track, to attempt to improve some things that I found underwhelming in the original. And this week we're looking at Gavarin, and I'm really excited to talk about what I did for this area. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the seventh part of this series. I want to first of all say thank you for so many of the kind and thoughtful comments on the previous video. It's a strange thing to have people that I've never met connected to me and my life through this channel, but I really feel so thankful to have honestly just a really cool and decent group of people that are subscribed to this channel. And I don't say this just to say it, but you are all really what has encouraged me to pick this project back up and continue to run with it. So seriously, thank you for the kind words and just for being excited to see more from me and from the channel. That means a lot. One thing I want to discuss briefly, just because it's continuing to be brought up and is getting a little more relevant as we're potentially nearing the end of the series, is modding the game with this soundtrack. Several people have asked about creating a mod, and at least one user has already uploaded a version of Dread to Game Banana with the first few reimagined tracks. Back when it was uncertain if I was going to come back and finish the soundtrack, so they did have my permission to do that. And what I'm hoping at this point is to create one official Arcade Redux mod of Dread when the entire project is done. Not only is there more areas and potentially other small parts of the soundtrack to recreate, but because I wasn't thinking about a mod originally, there is some work with the first few tracks that needs to be done for it to really work with the gameplay, specifically with the looping. So for now, I'd ask that we hold off on the modding until I'm able to get everything ready, and then we can together create one official version, and hopefully it won't be too much longer for that. Also, because so many of you have asked for it, I did upload just the reimagined tracks on their own for listening and streaming purposes. And I know many of you have been wanting that. And I do also want to point out that I have a SoundCloud you can check out and stream this project, as well as my other remixes and covers from Arcade Redux. And the link for that is in the description. With all that out of the way, let's check out part seven of the series, Gavarin. I'm gonna get this out of the way right off the bat. This might be my least favorite track in Metroid Dread. If you're someone who really enjoys this original, I would genuinely love to hear why in the comments. Not because I don't believe you, but because I wanna know what this track feels like to you. That's in a nutshell what I struggled to figure out when I'm listening to this. So be warned, this is gonna be some of my most fierce critique to this point. I'm gonna make a bit of a long-winded analogy that may not be perfect, but there's an experience I had while studying music in college that is resurfacing while I listen to this. About 10 years ago, I was in the process of completing a bachelor's degree in music composition, and so I was taking a class on 20th century music. And in the early 1900s, there was a method of composing that became pretty relevant called 12-tone technique. And without getting too lost in the weeds here, basically most music is divided into 12 different notes, and instead of grouping those notes into recognizable scales or keys that we're used to, like a major scale or a Dorian mode, which I've discussed previously on the channel, 12-tone technique uses each note possible the same amount of time, which completely destabilizes every sense of key center, home base, and most all uses of harmony as we know it. And I remember learning to write in this technique and it really kind of drove me crazy because quite simply, it just doesn't sound good to me. And it felt like a pretentious way to write music where instead of writing towards a sense of tension, resolution, and emotion, everything became based on sequences and patterns. I was told by my professor that it's really an acquired taste, which I'm sure that it is. I just did not desire to acquire it. This piece here by Arnold Schoenberg is one example of how this 12-tone style sounds when performed. Oh, 
All right, now is everyone nice and pissed off? Now I say all this to make this point. While not as egregious, just like that Schoenberg piece, this Gavin track comes across to me as just too foreign and unapproachable to be an effective complement to the gameplay. The strings are playing these long sustained chords that prominently use half-step dissonance throughout. There's nothing offensive about that in and of itself, but without ever deviating from that type of sound, it becomes a little grating on the ears, especially because the vocal line over top of that, it just doesn't work for me. For one, the MIDI vocal patch being used sounds bad. <laughs> Metroid soundtracks have historically used MIDI vocal parts, and I've never felt that they feel as artificial as they do here. There's no processing or velocity control done to smooth it out, and combined with an uninteresting melody itself that lacks any kind of movement or direction, the whole idea really comes across as bland, weird, and ultimately just uninspired. Now I do want to say that I think I understand what the composers were trying to achieve with all of this. If I'm correct in assuming the intention of a track like this, the point is to make you feel disoriented and unstable through the music. Because there's no sense of familiarity in the harmony and the key center, you're meant to feel tense and unstable as you journey through this area. Sort of like how a horror movie score tends to do the same kind of thing. And I think in general that was the goal of the Dread soundtrack at large. But the execution of that idea to me really falls flat here. And what makes it even weirder is that the percussion tying the whole thing together is this really out of place use of cymbals and chimes that just don't line up with that being the desired outcome. When you put it all together and take it in as a listener, I think ultimately it just leaves me feeling confused. So as I approached this area, I pretty quickly concluded that to reimagine this track, I needed to essentially start from square one. I looked at some gameplay from the area silently and tried to let the environment point me in a direction as a composer. And in doing so, I began to take in a completely different direction. This is gonna be the most different take on a track so far, and not just in style, but in overall tone and the atmosphere that I'm wanting to create. So it may feel a little jarring, especially if you agreed with the approach of the original track. But as I watched Samus move through this area without any music, I didn't get a sense of foreboding or tenseness. I actually felt a sense of life and growth. Yes, there's this dim green canvas, but there's also these bright plants shooting up everywhere. There's a variety of interesting new creatures and even flowing water all around. The track that I think should have been written for this area needed to coincide with these elements and accompany the natural jungle-like feel of what Gavern is. As I began to try to emulate these feelings musically, the first thing that came out was a bass pattern, which became the basis of the whole track. It's a short ostinato in 5-8 that's basically the glue holding everything together. I like the uneven yet constant feeling of the whole thing being in five. It creates a constant sense of motion, like a runaway train that can't be stopped. I actually talked about the 5-8 meter in the video I did breaking down the Super Metroid soundtrack. The Ridley theme that you're probably familiar with is a great example of what a track in five can accomplish. I wanted to use that rhythmic template to make this particular track feel more rooted in the Metroid sound while still moving in a new direction that would make sense for a new 2D adventure like Dread. There wasn't much that I used from the original track, but one thing you may notice is a snippet of that vocal melody that we talked about earlier. And what I hope to do is demonstrate how by combining the dissonant parts of the harmonic spectrum, while also juxtaposing familiar sounds, everything starts to make more sense. The dissonant packs a harder punch, the resolutions feel more satisfying, and there's a musical framework that ties all of that together in a cohesive way. Please continue to let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Please subscribe if you haven't. And with all that said, I hope you enjoy the track.